afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Kerry Justick. Today, I'm sitting down with Alexa Chung and Tan France, who are two of the biggest names in fashion. But in their latest Netflix series, they're looking for the next household name designer. The show, Next in Fashion, already has people buzzing and binging, and for good reason. Please help me in welcoming Alexa and Tan. Yes, I am. And yeah, I'm, you should be. Yeah, we've. I've never referred to myself as one of the biggest names in fashion, I but I'll that take part, it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, that. Let's just kick it off with that because I do want to talk about that. I mean, Alexa. Yes. People have known you for a long time. I'm very old. Y not old. <laughs> experienced. Thank you. And Tan. I mean, obviously, you're a fan favorite from Queer Eye. People oh, are nice. obsessed with you, but. With this show, obviously, you two are the authorities in this. I mean, you are a designer. Now you're judging designers. And I I'm mean, it's... I'm also a designer. Yes. Just to clarify, like, that is actually my background. I'm I know... also on Queer Eye. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, I, 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 here's the thing I, I keep saying, but I'm going to keep on saying it, is I think people just assume I'm a stylist because of what they see on Queer Eye. I'm actually not a stylist. I'm actually a designer first and foremost. You're just good at everything. Right? <laughs> But even just thinking about yourself as a household name, I'm sure that's a weird thing. I'm literally yeah. a household name because I am Alexa. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. So I already <laughs> occupy a great space in most people's homes. So now I'm just pleased to bring the Chung yeah. to your favorite yeah. device. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, but what has that been like for you guys? Like you, you know, like being designers who are now yeah. judging designers. I actually initially. Uh, like a modern person does these days. I've switched careers quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually started out as a TV host in England. So I was 22 when I started being on TV and before that I was a model from 15. So like I've never really known a different experience necessarily. So I, I'm pleased that people like the show uh, but I, yeah, I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> she's I've pleased, just been, she's pleased, I've just been in my studio. <laughs> no, because I really, I have a fashion line. Yeah. Uh, we're based Alexa in Instagram. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Alexa we're based Instagram. in East London. So my reality now is just like actually being the creative director and doing that. So it was lovely to do this show and flex some kind of judging muscle, but I've never done it before. Um, and I, I hope to do it again. <laughs> Let's hope so. I'm actually going to speak for her. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that like was that a I rambling. Just, no, no, no. I, I just like... ate loads of pasta and now I've got um, <laughs> carbonara brain. <laughs> No, Which is I'm an actually, affliction. I'm going to say this. Uh, so she's, it was very well respected in the fashion space for a long time. And then she created a brand that a lot of people... I, I wear some of her stuff. I love her stuff. You've got my jacket on. Uh, oh, people wear you. her stuff. And so it makes sense that Alexa would be judging. Uh, or she has a right to judge because her, her aesthetic is uh, wonderful. And it's an aesthetic people really gravitate towards. So she's an authority. Thanks, Tan. It's all right, my love. You know, you, you, you've had the pasta. You can't concentrate. I'll answer for her. I just love this already because, I mean, the, what are we, English queens? Yeah. We're English like, queens. Like, this, I think, I was looking at your Instagram yeah. from when the show launched and you were very much like, I'm nervous. The show's oh coming my out. Like, gosh. how will people receive it? Yeah. People are freaking out over this. It's and I nice. personally think it's because of you two and all the that. people on the show, just yeah. the relationships and how human yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, you obviously worked with a group of guys for Queer Eye. What was it like making this connection and this sweet, relationship? Sweet, sweet love. It's, yeah, it's nice woman. to have somebody really nice to work with as opposed to those mean, mean, mean boys. Oh. You know them, they're just... Not, no, oh. it's a... Uh, that, that, oh, it was such a relief. Honestly, it is a concern when you... Uh, you've been in TV for a long time also when, and you've had rotating castmates, host, whatever. Yeah, I'm not a loyal lover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's nerve-wracking thinking, I don't know what this person's going to be like. I've gotten so comfortable with people that know me so well and that we vibe really well and we clearly have a very strong chemistry to working with somebody that you don't really know, thinking, gosh, I hope that works out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're bloody lucky because it worked out real well. Yeah, it's a leap of faith because yeah. they kind of put you together. We had actually already met very briefly mm -hmm at a party and I am a huge fan of Tan anyway. So I I had high hopes that it, it wouldn't be a disaster. <laughs> um, oh but from day one we got on very well. So it's been it's been so nice, yeah. And I mean, even with the contestants, your relationships, I love seeing those because especially for a competition series, you kind of think of the host says maybe you know like not a separate always entity yeah yeah and you guys i mean you're rooting for them we the were all time. up in their business yeah, yeah. yeah. Too much. annoyingly uh present no we 
it was great because we got to see them in the workshop actually doing the patterns and sewing this stuff together. But a lot of the time, you know, they, they're really up against it. They have a day to complete that. So we were just interrupting them and <laughs> asking them questions. And sometimes we would get short shrift and they'd yeah. be like, sorry, can you Leap please go away and stop doing gymnastics? Yeah. Like, sorry, we have to make TV out of this. So we have to talk a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the reason why I think it's different for us on our show is because, again, we are designers. We know what it feels like to uh, have a deadline or to know that something's not going right or the fact that you've chosen a fabric and it's too late to change that fabric. Like, that's an intimidating process. So I think that's why we were able to connect with our uh, contestants so greatly um, because we just, we wanted them to succeed. It was never a case of, well, that one needs to fail because we need, but we needed yeah. them to succeed. If you have experience of doing it yourself, you can be way more um, mm -hmm. empathetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. And just hearing you say the part of we're designers too, that obviously... That hit me after the streetwear episode, yeah. and I don't want to give too much away. Hopefully, you all already watched it, because like I said, it's so good and binge-worthy. Um, but there was a really human moment there, yeah. um, and you got emotional, and you did kind of plea with them, like, we've been in your shoes, mm -hmm. and we still struggle with these things. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened there and how you kind of hit that point? Yeah, uh, I think that is one of the the points of beauty of our show, is that we, uh, we decide but based on what that product was or that design was that episode, whether this person should move forward or not. And it, it, it really does show that it's an honest experience for us where we couldn't come to a unanimous decision and we do actually care. And you, if you know me from Kurai, you know I don't actually cry very often. In four and a half seasons, I've cried once on the show. I'm not a very emotional person. Um, and so when I got very emotional on uh, Next in Fashion, it's because I really did care. And that decision was so hard for us uh, to make. And I needed the designers to know that we aren't trying to say that we're separated. We don't understand your story. We don't understand how difficult this is. I want you to know that we're taking it so seriously. And so that's why it was emotional. Yeah. And week by week, obviously, it got harder and harder because you're weeding out people. And by that stage in the competition, everyone's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. So it was, we kind of... Uh, created a problem for ourselves really by yeah. the, the producers <laughs> did so well at casting it and everyone's super talented but it made judging almost impossible yeah, yeah. The, as we got towards the end we it wasn't it couldn't be based on are they a great designer because especially towards like the last four yeah. episodes i was what i watched again some of it last night um and to you i can. know i know <laughs> like, spend uh, the day doing press go home watch it again <laughs> I just, I, it's nice it's been a while since i watched it so i wanted to watch it again and really understand what people were talking about online and i watched it again thinking it wasn't that any of them wasn't a good designer because they were all wicked towards the end yeah. it's just that wasn't their chance that we had somebody called carly um who um, i don't want to give too much away but on one of the channel challenges she doesn't do very well she is a formidable formidable designer but that just wasn't her challenge and so I think that's what makes it interesting it's not that they're, they're not good designers they are they can all do this very easily it's just that sometimes that's not then that's not their genre yeah. well the challenges also were incredible and I loved it because even before watching you just look at the titles of everything and yeah. what they're going to be making and they're some of the most difficult things to pull off yeah. they're going from undergarments to suits to denim did you guys have any say in what those challenges were? Uh, not really. They had already laid out what they, how they wanted the episodes to take form, but we definitely were vocal about ones that we thought were preferable. Yes, um, or a little I, bit off. I think, <laughs> or a bit off, <laughs> um, or maybe not that different from one another. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, in the modern world, having a fashion line, it is uh, indicative of that experience that you might want to roll out um, a product line which includes sportswear and activewear but at the same time you might need to do tailoring so mm -hmm. it was more about testing the gauntlet that they would have to run were they to set up this own fashion company yeah and they can't just be good at one thing no like, you, you know it's typical that you might have a denim line or da 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 and so yeah it was good but denim is weirdly very very difficult very difficult and it's all well and good if you do one thing very well but that's not going to make an international brand that will make you successful to a certain extent, but you need to cater to more of an audience than just that one particular thing. Yeah. And so you were just saying you rewatched because you wanted to, you know, be part of the conversation yeah. that's taking place right oh. now. What has it been like going onto social media and seeing everybody's reactions? I, I've, you know, it can be scary. I haven't done a show 
that's been, you know, on an international platform ever. So I was a bit frightened, but actually, uh, at least on my Instagram, which is the one I look at, everyone's been really supportive mm -hmm. and really kind, and it's been lovely. Yeah, we were <laughs> talking about this earlier. It's funny. Uh, a lot of my friends, we communicate through DM instead of yeah. text, and the amount of people who have used the word actually, actually is funny. Yeah. Like, they were saying, oh, it's actually really good. I'm like... <laughs> No, I had the exact same thing. Like my family are so sweet. Of course, they support everything I do. But I could tell that it was yeah. actually a, a relief watchable show. <laughs> a relief to them. They were like, "We've actually finished the whole series." And <laughs> yeah. I was like, "What were you planning on doing?" <laughs> I was watching like a few episodes to tell you that they saw it. No, I watched yeah. one and then I watched more. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. We are related by blood. <laughs> well, to do that. I mean, honestly, if you're thinking about it, like I haven't seen a show like this that's been so revamped in a while. Like you've seen this type of show yeah. and so it's kind of like as an audience member you're like okay what are they going to do that's different yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and like I said it was so refreshing because of the relationships mm -hmm. the challenges and then my personal favorite episode was the underwear episode oh yeah, yeah. I like loved it yeah. but I also loved it because I mean even with different body shapes and sizes yeah. it was so seamlessly integrated into the conversation yeah. and the mm -hmm. the episode and it wasn't it wasn't a conversation yeah there's no reason Although a bit that they cut out of that episode was tan <laughs> when you were teaching the girl to walk in heels <laughs> in heels this girl she wore heels and she was like Ugh. actually every model yeah every one of them uh, the female models was gonna wear heels and two of the males and they couldn't do it. I was like, how is this even possible? So I came back from lunch and I like found Tan out the front, just like, Teaching okay, follow me. Heels. And he had <laughs> yeah. his, he loves a heel anyway, but he had his like yeah. tallest shoes like, on and was like. <laughs> use your hips. Yeah, like yeah. swing it around, <laughs> yeah. swing it. So Tan was using his spare time to teach yeah, the model. That was my lunch yeah, break. No, because, you know, you don't know Tan, but he really cares about people and he's a very nurturing energy and I think he just wanted them to look their best and they were beautiful these girls beautiful. but it's intimidating to wear underwear on a television yeah. show even if you're a model you know you're used to doing stills or whatnot this mm -hmm. is a catwalk in front of a live audience so I think they were maybe yeah, no. a bit nervous yeah. and you're also trusting designers that just put these right undergarments together <laughs> yeah. In a day. Uh, yeah oh yeah so I that's even crazy. Think of that, yeah, right? I know they were so brave. I was like, wow, I wouldn't have been able Here's to. Here's this underwear. I super just high cut. Oh my god! I was like, these ladies are really taking care of business down there. Yeah. Well, some of the models act. I was thinking from what I saw, they all seemed like they super knew what they were doing. Yeah, and which I loved because sometimes the designers could be like, oh, she like didn't know what she was doing and she made the garment look bad. But I was like, no, no, they, they said that in our show. No, no, not in our show. Uh -oh. in others, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's kind of like you. They all looked super professional. Yeah, they were cool. They were really nice, and great. they just we, a few of them were recurring. Yeah, uh, guests. Yeah. So. Yeah, they've put up with a lot as well. Long days. <laughs> Long days, just like standing around in like yeah. a leotard. Yeah, there was the one um, with the dress that was like impossible to open she and she Poor couldn't thing. go to the she bathroom. She was being so polite about it though. Yeah, yeah no, like, nothing yeah, came up. I kind of have needed Six to go hours. to the restroom for a while now. So I was blessed her. She didn't... And so obviously like with that conversation that I was just saying, like different sizes, more in inclusivity, all these things. I mean, even the contestants are international yeah. Yeah. from all over the place. Like what were some of the things that really excited you about the show and maybe how new and modern it is and yeah, I, how it reflects the fashion industry now versus what it could have been. I'm yeah, I'm really pleased that Netflix I, I kind of had no doubt that they would approach yeah. it with that tone, but my experience of even in my own office, the it's such a diverse uh group of people and really I employ people that have the best skills and quite often they've been trained not only in Britain but overseas maybe it's Antwerp Australia wherever so I don't think it was even necessarily an effort to do something special it was more that if you want to do a show about fashion you'd be remiss not to reflect it properly and in this day and age there is more diversity that people are making clothes with all body types in mind and people designing them and working behind the scenes really are from all over the world yeah. so it was more just an accurate representation mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think same. And for same. people who don't know much about the fashion industry and like mm -hmm. the logistics of it, it was crazy to hear about like ghost designers and oh, yeah. these people. Each of the contestants has created incredible yeah. products and brands and companies. And like you said, you were like, which one of you is a household name? Like, mm -hmm. 
what is going on in the fashion industry right now and how do you think this show is kind of like helping these designers? Well, it's even like with my company, I'm a creative director of my company, but I'm not the head designer. So it's quite typical that in a fashion house, there's all the different uh, jobs there. You'll have a pattern cutter, you'll have a knitwear designer. I actually don't know a designer brand that you, that everybody would know there's not one place I know where the design, the person that you are aware of of being the head of that house, they're actually making every one of those products. It's just not physically possible. They have a whole team of people. And if they did, it would probably be quite one note. And so you have a collective of wonderfully talented people. Um, and so that's what these people are, our, our designers are. They are part of those teams at those fashion houses. So they do design that product, but they just don't have the platform that a lot of these people have. Uh, Paul Lagerfeld had. Yeah. I think another thing that the show gets right is showing how uh, challenging it can be to work alongside someone else. So the, the idea of having teammates put together in twos working towards one common goal is really reflective of what happens. Like you have a vision, mm. but someone else's taste might, you know, change the course of that design. So I, li I like that. It's been really interesting. So uh, the, the response online has been wonderfully positive on our socials, but that is the one thing that people say, that's not fair that you put them with a stranger. I'm like, that's what happens in the real world. Mm -hmm. You don't get to choose who your partner in design is. Like the, your boss, Alexa, would hire somebody at the, the studio. Your boss, your boss, Alexa. your common boss, <laughs> Alexa Chung boss, Alexa. of the world. Yeah, and um, and yeah, and they they've chosen somebody that they think is wonderful, and then you have to work with them and make it work. And we found on our show that uh, that it didn't matter really if somebody had worked with that person before; you could still get to the end. The interesting part about that too, the dynamics, is none of them really went sour. There were definitely disagreements, or at least yeah. from what I yeah. saw, but they all handle it in a really constructive yeah. way. And it's not like anybody's getting kicked off and people are like, huh, good riddance. We, like you guys, everybody is rooting for that. Wouldn't you say it's also kind of a bit old fashioned now? Oh! <laughs> to put mugs, you know? <laughs> um, so, uh, I just think there's a spirit of, I mean, whatever's going on in the world is crazy as well. So maybe that's why this is the kickback to it. Yeah. But it seems kind of uh, old fashioned to people to be bitchy to one another and whatever. Like we're now living in an era where it's better to be uplifting and try and find common ground rather than uh, agitate the other differences. Mm -hmm. And that's a tone that we really desperately wanted to foster on our show between us also, um, and then with us and the contestants and the between, between the contest contestants. I think somebody just trumped. Um, <laughs> and um, good for you, let it out. And, <laughs> and, um, Sorry. <laughs> oh, it was you. <laughs> so I thought it was coming from that area. And so, uh, yeah, I do think that it's, um, I do think that it's important that we set the tone from the top and make it clear that we're not here hear about the to, to champion aggression or negativity we're, we're designers we don't have to be enough of we don't that. have to fight enough of that around yeah there's no reason to get nasty with each other yeah. yeah like i said i think that's why so many people are loving it we just yeah. want something good to watch yeah. something yeah. good and happy yeah. and nice and then on top of it these people are creating incredible wouldn't things. it be funny if you if you had watched queer eye and then you watched our show and i was just nasty to everyone like <laughs> that would be great hey you get yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's, i mean it's crazy <laughs> because you again so seamlessly go into this competition yeah. atmosphere and i think yeah. people have an idea of what that can look like yeah. but you guys are just i mean you're like they're loving siblings yeah. and friends thanks for not saying mom and dad because you would have made us that, feel really old so thanks but you for that get, yeah. but you get the job done <laughs> thanks um thanks. I do also want to ask you just about the designers that you had come on and guest judge. Yeah. You had an incredible lineup of, yeah. of people. Yeah. How exciting was that for you? How was it Super to work exciting. with all these different people? I think it was it it was really valuable to have them in the room because they acted also as mentors to the contestants. So even if it was a week where those people had to go, they managed to have conversations with those people like Philip Lim or Prabal or um, Christopher Kane, and these are people that they really respect within the industry. So, again, it's not like a made-for-TV fake fashion designer. It's someone that really understands and runs their own house and understands the trials and tribulations yeah. uh, that come with it. So, 
we were really lucky to get so such great yeah. people. And it wouldn't have been fair if it was just Alexa and I judging. Um, we do like that aspect, but it, it really helped to have a couple of people who could w see it with fresh eyes because we got to know the contestants so well. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have people come in and who didn't know their previous work and just judge it purely on that episode, that look. I think that really helped us mm. stay focused. Yeah. We loved Philip as well, didn't we? Loved, oh. Wearing Philip's so pants right now. Are you? Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, he was, was lovely. I was very inspired after watching. Yeah. I've never met Christopher he, uh, Kane. He's a very, um, very, very big designer in the U UK. Yeah. You were already a friend. I had never met him. And now we DM and it's very nice. Yeah. I made friends. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. We're going to hand it over to audience Q&A. We have five questions, and the first one is on Twitter. Hello to Alexa and Pan. I'm a model in the Midwest who is looking to go into the more typical East Coast Europe industry. Do you have any advice, tips, or tricks? Thank you so much. P.S. Alexa, you're one of the reasons I began modeling in the first place. Oh, Can I Grace. take this one? Because I'm model first, yeah. um, where I second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was like, uh, I want to model in the wizard. Yeah, she's gonna have to move there, isn't she? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to break it to you. It's pack gonna be mouse. great, but pack up that sack. We're going to Paris. <laughs> um, I think we're living in an interesting time where, I mean, I wish I was modeling in this day and age because when I was modeling, you had to stand on your mark, stay quiet. They encouraged everyone to wear kind of the same uniform to castings. Whereas now, I think after social media, we live in a world where. Um, eccentricity is celebrated or being different or just being yourself. So I'm excited for her to start modeling now. Uh, I guess it's about maybe being in situ because they need to see you. So I think she should move to LA. Oh no, the East Coast, New York. Come on over. Come on over. <laughs> okay, and then we have um, in our audience. Hello. Hello. Um, my question, you guys both have had very expansive careers. Um, was there a moment in y'all's careers where you were like, I've made it, oh. you know, or has that happened yet? Or I've made it. <laughs> yeah. I have. Okay, go on. Uh, this, so when I was younger, I used to have a dream thinking that if I, if I hit this certain point, if I could do that thing, then that's when I think I would have made it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mine was, this was quite a while ago. It was the first time I could afford a first class ticket, not just the upgrade. It was the first time I could afford a first class ticket when I had, I had a few design business brands. Um, and it was the first time that happened. I was like, oh, I've made it. And then I realized that wasn't making it, but it felt so fancy at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, would say I did a collaboration a few years ago with Madewell and I made this collection and it was in New York and, um, Anna Wintour came to look at the collection. And when she arrived, I was with my agent and we just like got some takeouts. We had like literally plastic bags in our hands and <laughs> we weren't prepared for her yet. <laughs> uh, I had to show her the collection on my friends who were modeling it. So like my friend Pixie and Poppy or whatever. And it was a groupies collection. So I'd made like hot pants and like, and I was like, you know, Anna, it's just like what you want to wear on the road. Like you can stick your triple A thing on your butt there, like boom. And I just remember, going, having this out of body experience where I was like, I'm showing a fashion collection to Anna Wintour. Like that is the weirdest thing. I've got a follow up. Did you eat your takeout whilst you were giving the presentation? I was like, I don't hear the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, burrito, um, <laughs> burrito my teeth, sorry guys. Um, no, so I think, you know, actually interacting with the woman herself was probably the moment where Legend I was like, this is stuff. mental. Yeah. Yeah the difference from the first class ticket. I know. <laughs> She's like Anna Wintour. Yeah, and shut like, up, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> and I flew. Go to sleep, it. Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. And our next audience question. Me. Hi, I'm Natalie. Hi. Nice to meet you Hi, both. nice to meet you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Love your sweater. Thank you Love so much. Love your shoes. Thank you. Amazing. Um, love you on Queer Eye and Dressing Thanks. Funny. You helped Pete Davidson out so much. So. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God for you. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, what are your fashion icons and where do you get inspiration from? Do you get it from walking in New York City? Do you get it from watching movies? Where where does it strike? Do you want to go? Yeah, I, uh, definitely I find New York very inspiring. Um, I lived here in East Village for seven years, so that was kind of my stomping ground. Never went above 14th. Anyway, uh, for me, it's I've always been heavily inspired by menswear and my style icons are kind of rock musicians from the 60s and 70s. So still now with my brand, we always have like Brian Jones on the board or 
um, Iggy Pop, Mick Jagger, basically everyone in the Rolling Stones. Um, so that's my vibe, yeah. or that attitude. And it can be transferred into a dress as well, which is why I wear a lot of uh, fairy tale dresses, but with flat shoes. I just want to feel like I could go on stage in it and <laughs> wield a guitar, not that I can play the guitar. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> Uh, I don't have uh, like a, a solid icon that I look to for inspo, but um, yeah, just walking the streets of actually mine is London because I, I live in the US, so it's nice to go over to London. Um, and I, I was in China a lot, um, like a lot, a lot, Shanghai, and I thought their style was incredible, so I was wildly inspired by them. Um, honestly, as far as a fashion icon, it's not the person I want to look like, but I will always love Anna's look. Or Anna Winter's look. Like, I just love that she stuck to that haircut for like 20 years. I'm like, you go. Like, My mum has that haircut. Uh, that the Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's love classic. It. And actually, it's the reason why I started doing my hair like this. My hair hasn't always been this gray. It's gotten grayer and grayer. But I, uh, before I turned 30, I was like, I just want to have like a classic look that I don't have to think But about. you know that's how you build an iconic brand. It's, yeah, yeah. It's repeat. Yeah. Like, Karl Lagerfeld, you can yeah. imagine it's the wig and the glasses. Yeah. And the thingy, or yeah. Anna, it's, it's yeah. the wig and the glasses and the... No, no, no. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. you've got iconic hair now. Oh, thanks. I was going to say that's thanks. like the way yeah. of an icon. Yeah, yeah. You guys got it down pat, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> and then we have another question. Hello. Hello. Everyone's oh. very stylish. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I yeah. mean, everybody came dressed to him. No, it's not. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I did this just for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, for Alexa, I recently watched a video of you giving a tour of Williamsburg. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem with the internet, that stuff hangs around, huh? <laughs> it was like from seven years ago, but I recently moved to Williamsburg. Yeah. And I was wondering what your favorite place to shop in Williamsburg is. Yeah. So back then, I remember making that video. It was a shopping guide then. So I haven't actually been there since my last trip, but Stella Dallas, is that still going? That was great. And it's... Uh, by, uh, it's like North, whatever, Fifth. Go on, go on, Bedford, you got it. Go on, Briggs, go on, love. Roebling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, going, yeah, 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 yeah. There it is, go, 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 go. Um, Stella <laughs> Dallas, great vintage shop, and uh, out the back, things are more reasonably priced, and then next door, it's forget about it. <laughs> yeah. And then our last question, right up, right up front. Hi, um, so we're Parsons students, and I was wondering if you had any advice for fashion students looking to go into the industry. My dad still wants me to go to Parsons, so I should, <laughs> yeah, I should be asking you, I think. <laughs> uh, I was a student also many, many years ago. Um, many, many. Many, <laughs> like a, many. I can barely remember I did it. Um, what I will say is um, I know that the dream is always to be like the next Alexander McQueen. Uh, and I think you have to accept uh, the fact that that's not possible for literally everyone because everybody wants that. And so maybe find uh, an area within the fashion industry that you truly could make your own, that you could make work, whether it is in uh, mass apparel retail, if it's in uh, a, a, a luxury sector, sector, just find that area of expertise that isn't the same thing that uh, literally millions of fashion students are going for and then make that your thing. That's how I created my businesses um, was finding a more niche market that I could design design for and learn how to do something called a tech pack. If that's the only advice you take away from what I'm saying today, learn how to do something called a tech pack. I have different advice. Oh, go. It's uh, just be willing to make coffee and tea mm -hmm. and just that's it. I did this whole series on uh, with British Vogue about how to get into the fashion industry and really the takeaway advice from every designer, photographer, whoever it was in the industry was actually an attitude of being willing to help mm -hmm. is what furthered their career and ultimately got them to where they were. They didn't mind, uh, I'm about to swear then, they didn't <laughs> mind shoveling shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they just got in, they got stuck in there. So being as helpful as you can will get you noticed and then you can move into the next bit. But as much experience as you possibly can get, I think. Thank you. You're yeah. Guys, thank you both so much thank for you. joining us. Thank you for having I us. have had a ball with the English Queens. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> go check out Next in Fashion on Netflix. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.